Hey guys, y'all probably know a lot about Zinedine Zidane's bio already, and this video will tell you some notable events from the difficult childhood and adulthood of one of the greatest people in the history of football. Now without further ado, let's begin! But before we start, write the correct answers in the comment section down below. Immigration on November 1st, 1954, the life of Zinedine Zidane's father, Smail, changed just like the life of millions of his fellow citizens. That night, the war for the independence of Algeria began. Thousands of people were taking boats and crossing the sea to get to France, the country which Algeria was at war with. Smail Zidane was among those who was trying to escape. The young shepherd didn't want to take part in the bloodshed in his homeland. Besides, he wasn't an Algerian to the full. Smail belonged to the Berbers, one of the numerous nationalities who lived in Algeria. After a month of wandering in search of work in France, he settled down in the suburbs of Paris, Saint-Denis, and started renting an apartment with his friends. A few years later, he returned to Marseille to take a boat to Algeria, where the war had just ended. However, that wasn't meant to happen. That night, Smail met Malika his future wife and the mother of his five children, the youngest of whom was none other than Zinedine Zidane. They gave the boy an unusual name, which means the beauty of faith in Berber. Childhood I lived in a notorious district, but the most important is not where you live, but who you live with, Zinedine recalls. None of my 20 friends drank or smoked, I think it's the value that your family and friends believe in that determines whether you're going to do stupid things in life or not. Zidane grew up in La Costelon, a crime-ridden housing development in Marseille, a port city in the south of France. Unemployment and suicide rates were alarmingly high in La Costelon. Zidane's family rented an apartment in one of those panel houses where nothing changed for years. Almost 40 years later, the windows of Zidane's childhood home are boarded with iron sheets. The building is being prepared for demolition as part of the program against drug trafficking. Zidane's father was an overnight department store watchman. He worked very hard and always told his children that the immigrant should work twice as much as the native. Smail only allowed them to watch a small black and white TV a few hours in the evening. Zidane's mother was a housewife. She ran the house and made sure that no one got involved in bad companies. Zinedine, or Yaz as his family called him, spent all his free time playing football with the neighborhood children at the place Tartan, the main square of the housing complex he lived in. He could stay outside as much as he wanted to, but there was one condition. He was not allowed to leave the square as his mother couldn't keep an eye of him elsewhere. In his early days, Zinedine's love for football was mainly influenced by Olympic Marseille players Jean-Pierre Papin, Enzo Francescoli, and Vlad Slitskovic, who were his soccer star's idols. Luckily, Zidane's family avoided getting involved into the criminal life of Marseille. Zinedine, by his own admission, did something bad only once. He and his friends didn't have any money to buy their mom's gifts for the Mother's Day. So they took two flower pots from the neighborhoods and ran away, and for that he's still sorry. High moral values are the result of his father's lessons. Under no circumstances, Zinedine had the right to disgrace his name. Smail Zidane even brought the whole family to his native village for a few months so they could feel the atmosphere of their homeland. Family I used to come home from school, grab a cracker and a piece of chocolate and leave to play football, Zidane says many years later. There were 10 guys from 8 to 12, and all we did was trying to repeat the most unusual finds. We'd created some sort of a competition, repeating all these tricks until there was one of us who was not mistaken. I did crazy things back then. For Berbers, family is the most important thing in life. Smail Zidane did his best to promote the same traditions to his children. Zinedine's older brothers, Farida and Nardine, shared the football wear with their younger brother, and his sister Leela always got some sweets for him. She later told that Yazid was trying to catch up with his brothers, 
and that he asked his father to unscrew a pair of bicycle safety wheels to ride like an adult when it was four. Zinedine remembered hardly those years when his whole family lived in a tiny apartment where the kitchen was so small that not all seven could sit down together and eat. Zizou practiced his skills with his older brother. Nardine was very talented as well, but didn't manage to achieve the same results. As for school, teachers didn't really load Zidane with homework, providing his athletic activity. In return, he showed up in classes regularly and tried to do the task as best as he could. Zidane was a very active child. Besides football, he practiced judo, rode a bicycle and a skateboard. At 11 years old, the father, however, forced his son to make a choice. On Saturday, Yas took part in a judo tournament and won a green belt. Next day, he got up at 5 a.m. for an important football match, appeared on the field and fainted 15 minutes later. The doctor stated over fatigue and told Smail that his son should not do everything at once. The choice was pretty clear. Start of the journey. I'm trying to be a role model for young people, especially those who live in the poor district of Marseille. If someone ever says that he would want to be like Zinedine Zidane, I would be really happy, says Zizou, who still got a long-standing ties with Marseille. Zidane was lucky enough to be on the streets of Marseille at a time when a city was running a campaign to find the young talented guys. Scouts of the semi-amateur saint Henri noticed an 11-year-old boy on Tartan and mentioned his natural talent and dribbling skills. A few years later, he was transferred to saint le -Vallon. Robert Centenero, the club's owner, was a very nice person and loved children. He gave the boys rides to the games on his Renault and took him to his pizzeria afterwards. A couple of years later, Zizou was among those selected for a three-day training in Aix-en-Provence at the Krebs. He made a lot of mistakes, however, his skills were trained by A.S. Khan's recruiter, who offered him a contract. Zidane spent his first salary buying gifts for his mother, brothers and a sister. A few seasons later, when he had earned a huge contract at Bordeaux, he took this family from the criminal district of Marseille. As the years passed, Zinedine grew from a skinny teenager to the world football star, the world champion, winner of the FIFA, Ballon d'Or, and a happy father of four. His journey, which began in the streets of Castellon, led him to the La Castellana Street, where one of the most recognizable stadiums of the world stands, the famous Santiago Bernabeu. This place magnetized him, he was a star on the field in this arena and years later returned to the club system and rose to the head coach. Zinedine was the first man in the history who won three Champions Leagues in a row, and then left only to return again and start it all over. Without any doubt, Zidane has achieved everything. An outstanding career, a loving family, and admiration of millions of football fans all over the world. However, there's still one dream left that has been cherishing for a very long time now. When I finally back off from football, my father and I will return to the village in Algeria, where he grew up. We have a question for you guys. Y'all probably remember when Zidane hit Matarazzi in the World Cup final, but Zizou got involved in fights regularly and got his first removal at 21 when he played for Bordeaux and hit this star player off Marseille and the French national team. Who was it? We hope you enjoy. Do not forget to give a thumbs up and write down your comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button.